We're now joined on the sports mix by Musselman football head coach Brian Thomas. Coach Thomas, your team is defeated 56 to 8 last week against Martinsburg. Just overall, what were your takeaways from that game? I mean, I, I think our kids battled. I think our kids played. I think our kids played hard. Um, you know, they're they're giving us everything that they can. They're they're you know they're 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 playing well as a team. You know, their efforts really high. You know, the, the to me. To me, those things are really important. So, you know, even though, you know, even though we didn't win, um, you know, in, in, in the win column, you know, it, it's it's not that's not great. But as far as just them playing hard, I'm really proud of the effort that they continue to show. Coach, you mentioned that effort, and one guy that stands out was Nate Lazier from the other night. Uh, most rushing yards this season against Martinsburg for an individual player. So uh, what does that say about him and also your offensive line at times having some good plays uh, from Friday night? Yeah, Nate's a really good player. You know, Nate, Nate's, a re- Nate's a really good running back. You know, I've, I've been really fortunate enough since I've been the head coach here at Musselman that we've had a lot of really good running backs um, come through the program. You know, we've had a lot of first-team All-State guys. You know, you even look back, even look back, you know, over 10 years ago, you know, Deontay Glover, Jacob Northcraft, um, you know, Latrell War, who was kind of a quarterback slash running back. Um, you know, obviously everybody knows Blake Hartman. Uh, so, you know, we've had a lot of really good kids. You know, Nate, Nate's talent-wise, you know, Nate, Nate's up there, man. Nate's a, Nate's a really good running back and a really good player. So, um, you know, he continues to kind of – kind of ha- he's having a pretty good season. Um, you know, he's, he's had some, some big gains and some um, – you know, he's had a couple really good games. So, we're – you know, we – we trust Nate. Um, you know his work ethic's really good, so he's a, he's a good football player. Within that game, you guys pretty much ran the ball. Uh, didn't really throw that much, and in the backfield, it was kind of by commission as to who would take the snaps and go from there in that uh, style of offense. Yeah. Just tell us a little bit about that approach, uh, if that will kind of be the mainstay for the rest of the season, or do you feel like maybe week-to-week basis, depending on who you're playing, things might uh, change? Yeah, I mean, we, we've, we've thrown the ball a little bit more as the season's going along, you know, trying to implement something new this year, trying to implement a new system. You know, sometimes there's things you want to work at, work on. Sometimes there's things that, you know, you're trying to see – how your kids handle certain adjustments. So, you know, we, we, we've done that a little bit throughout the season. We know it's not that we don't have confidence in throwing the ball. We're just, uh, you know, we're just a run first team. So, you know, we're trying to make some, you know, even the other night we were trying to make some adjustments on some things. Uh, we were trying to fix some stuff and, and, you know, go from there. So, you know, we're definitely going to be a run first team at the same time. Um, you know, we, 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 we're not afraid to throw the ball, you know, playing a team like Martinsburg, Sometimes if you sit there and chuck the ball around a lot, you get in a shootout and, and you know, you give them more possession and more time. And that's, you know, that's never, never really a good recipe. So uh, that was kind of our game plan the other night. Coach, how, how important do you think it is for your team to keep that same kind of mentality? Because a lot of times when teams start to lose, yeah. they maybe change things up too much. And then it just gets worse from there. So how important do you think it is, even though your team is 0-5, to keep the consistency in terms of the game plan and the playbook most weeks? Yeah, that's a a really good question. Um, You know, I I think, you know, I think sometimes teams – teams just go away from what they want to do or teams go away from, from, you know, you, you lose a little bit of your struggle and they change everything up. And I think sometimes that creates confusion amongst your kids. Um, you know, I'm a big believer in, in sticking with what you're doing and make the adjustments as, as you go on. Um, so, you know, we, we have a system on both sides of the ball that we believe in, um, you know, even the other night, and this might sound crazy, but, even watching film the other night, you're down twenty eight nothing. It's like, oh man, it's like, you know, we're 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 not doing things awful and it's like, well, yeah, but you're down four touchdowns. It's just you know, so that at some point they made better plays at us than some stuff. And when you play a team like Martinsburg, you know, that's that's gonna be that's gonna be the case sometimes. You know, I've like I've I've you know, gone against them a lot where uh, you know, it's not necessarily that hey, your kids are, are in the wrong, um, but they're just you know they're able to they're able to to make things happen because they're a really good football team. So uh, we're you know we're going to continue to grow. We're going to continue to get better. I'll I'll tell you I'll tell you this. It's not 
our, our locker room believes and our, and our kids believe and our kids have stuck together uh, really good all, all season. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited to get into, get into the locker room this week and get around the team this week and, and, you know, get back at it and get in preparation for another game. And that perfectly kind of tees up the question that I want to ask you, and please don't take any offense to this. It's not no, been the season that uh, – Musselman program tends to have. Yeah. You're sitting at zero yeah. and five. So the question is just simply: How do you yourself stay as positive as you have been through uh, this season so far? And how how do you make sure that the team does as well? Because I know it can be extremely difficult the way things have gone. Yeah, I mean, first off, I respect you saying that. I, I don't take any of that stuff offens- offensively. You know, I, I, you you guys. You guys got a job to do and got questions asked, so I, I don't I don't take any of that offensively at all. But I mean, you, you're you're right. Nobody wants to be sitting at zero and five. That's not that's not your goal. You don't want to be sitting here halfway through the season having zero wins. That's not your goal at all. But um, you know, I, I'm I'm a positive person. I've always been like that. You know, I've always been um, I, I, I've always been kind of a, a glass half full kind of guy. Um, actually, you know, tell you a story uh, when when I was a sophomore in high school. Um, I started as a sophomore, and I was on a team that went 0-10. And uh, we had a game late in the season that we played probably the best team in our schedule. And my parents still tell the story that, you know, I came home and I was like, hey, you know, here's the game plan. Here's what we're going to do. Here's how we're going to win this game. So, you know, I've been like that my whole life. I, I think you look at the – I think in the world we live in, so many people dwell on negatives and look at negative things. And, and you know, sometimes it, you know, it, it's easy – it's easy, um, you know. You, you you can do you can do ten things, and nine things can be right, and one thing can be wrong. And sometimes people want to point out that one wrong and dwell on that. So you know, I, we, we we stay positive, you know, we, and I think our team staying positive. You just continue to get better, um, and, and you know, you look for what are we doing good, what are we doing bad, how can we improve on the things that we're doing bad, how can we get better even at the things that we're doing good. So uh, you know, we're. You know, we still got we still got five games left, and and you know we still got half the season ahead of us. So you know we're going to continue to to get better, and we're going to continue to kind of uh, try to grow as a team. You know, both schematically, I think, and um, you know, with our mental approach to things. Coach Cavill Midland this week, they've also had their struggles uh, winless so far. Both teams, though, I, I would say, have played pretty tough schedules. So, just. Uh, what are you seeing from them so far this year, and how do you think you guys stack up? It's like looking in a mirror, honestly. You know, you look at our schedule right now. Um, somebody told me the other day that we had the toughest um, strength of schedule so far this year. So you look at our schedule, and it's pretty tough. And then you look across the field, and you look a little bit at what they've done. You know, they played Huntington. You know, their their side of the state, they played Huntington, Spring Valley, and, and uh, um, Hurricane, who are all GW. You know, they've played – really good teams as well. So, you know, you you kinda look at two teams that um two teams that are that are both sitting in the same boat. Um, you know, we're sitting at 0 and five. We both played a, a, a pretty tough schedule. So um, you know, it, that, that that's really kind of what I gather from that. It's I, I feel like it's almost looking in the mirror. What do you feel like this week it's gonna take to be the ones to come out on top? You know, we 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 have to execute stuff and we, we have to be consistent with the things that we do. We can't we can't come out and get down 14 nothing and dig ourselves in a hole. At the same point, if we get up 14 nothing, we can't let up and then let them back in the game. So, you know, it's uh, somebody somebody at some point in this lead is going to have a – and this game's going to have a lead. It might be us. It might not be us. I think if it if it is us, we got to build on that lead. If it's not us, then we got to, you know, fight and, and, and get back into the thing. So I really think the consistency through the four quarters – uh, is what I'm looking at probably more than anything. And Coach, you mentioned obviously the the strength of schedules and both teams have played tough schedules as being very similar. But I would presume again, Cabell Midland, a very run heavy team as well. So styles should be I, I would guess similar as well between you two teams. So just what are you seeing from them in terms of uh, what they do each week and in, in, uh, in their schemes and stuff like that? And how, how do you feel like you'll have to prepare for that? Yeah, honestly, it's difficult. Um, they they've they've done some different things. They've kind of jumped around um, in, into some different things. So um, you know, they 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 did. They came out earlier in the year and they ran a lot of tight end stuff. And then they jumped into some spread formations. And, and you know, last week they jumped into some single wing stuff. So they've 
Um, you know, they've done some different things. So we got to kind of prepare for a little bit of everything this week and, and you know, be ready. Uh, we got to be smart about what our, what our checks are, and we got to be smart about what they're coming out in. You know, they, they have some athletes. Um, that they try to get the ball to in various ways. So we got to be aware where those kids are in there. You know, they have some size up front. Like I said, they just, you know, they just ran into a, a difficult schedule. They've been in some games though. You know, they, that GW game, they could have won that. That could have went either way. And Spring Valley, they played, um, pretty tough. And even, you know, even last week in Huntington, they were hanging around there, um, a little bit for, for part of the first half. So, you know, they, they've done some good things. You know, they have a good program. We played them last year twice. Um, played them last year twice and I know they got a new head coach this year so they're a little bit different but um, you know it's, it's a prideful football program that that expects to be at the top of the state so um, you know they're going to come in here hungry they're going to be wanting to win their first game just like we do so uh, you know we, we got to be ready to go. All right, Coach Thomas, any other thoughts? If not, we'll get to the fun question. I don't believe so. All right, fun question for this week is, uh, in your opinion, what are the greatest strengths and weaknesses of being a football coach? Did you say strengths and weaknesses? Yes. Oh, man, that, <laughs> that's a tough question. So strength to me is very easy. You get to you, – you get, you get kids that are – at such a vulnerable point in their life, you know, they're, they're teenage boys and they can be very easily influenced and you get a chance to be a positive influence. I mean, that's the reason I got into coaching is because I had a lot of coaches that, um, I had a lot of coaches that, you know, influenced me in a positive way and, and helped me be a better, better man in my life. So, you know, that, that to me is by far the strength is that you get to, you, you get a chance to impact those kids and be around those kids and hopefully make them a better person and, and, you know, ultimately make this world a better place, which is, you know, what, what, you know, we should all strive to do. Um, weaknesses, you know, I, I think probably the weakness is um, when I was an assistant coach under coach Price, he told me one time something that's always stuck with me. He said, you know, it's really easy to second guess things and, and uh, to to have opinions when you're an assistant coach um, or when you're on the outside, he said. But when you sit in this chair, it's really difficult. And I, I remember when he said that to me, I was, you know, in my 20s, and I kind of thought to myself, oh, yeah, I can't be that hard. And you know, now that I've had this position, it, it is hard. So you know, sometimes there's difficult decisions, just like any business. Um, you know, in any any business, any organization, you, get, you know, the, the person at top's got to make tough decisions sometimes, and they're not always going to be like that. You know, that's probably the that's probably the weakness, or maybe the toughest part is that you know you're 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 not going to make everybody happy. Nick Saban had that quote that said, "If you want to make everybody happy, go sell ice cream." So, yeah. All right, Coach Thomas, thank you for the time. Best of luck against Cabell Mendlin. Yeah, thank you guys. I appreciate all you do. I appreciate-